Hi, Mary. Um, can you just give an indication um, when we can get sorted? Um, hi, everyone. Um, I think we should just wait for three more minutes, but I've lost their recording, so we can start in a couple of minutes. We'll just wait okay. for the others to join. Um, just to let everyone know, this is actually the females only session. So I do see a few guys here. Um, not sure if you're here for support. Um, yeah, but this is supposed to be for the females only session. Uh, Mariam, do you think we can get started? Or should we just wait one more minute? Yeah, I'm thinking one more minute, so we just start at the right time. Um, the, I can still see a male yeah um. okay i think we can start now good morning afternoon everyone and welcome to the um welcome to week one female only session I and Carrie would be leading today's session and I'm sure you're familiar with both of us already from our previous career tutorials so like we've said on our telegram sorry like we said on our um, slack channel the essence of this female only session is pretty much for us to be each other's support system and as women we want to be able to empower one another Carrie do you want to say something um, yeah, so this is just a very informal session. This is not like the career tutorials. We are not yeah. teaching you anything. We are just giving advice <laughs> and giving you a space to speak. Um, because any male dominated field is difficult for any woman to exist in. Um, and of course, the specific industry, like the tech industries, quite challenging i think for women for self-confidence um you know women deal with imposter syndrome we have to deal with sexism um bigotry from our colleagues so this is just a space for you to talk so we really want to you know we we are not going to talk much in the session we want you to speak and tell us how you how you feel how you have been feeling and what challenges you have been facing um so i think for today um we're just doing i'm just doing a short like two slide thing on um um on self-confidence so i'm just going to try and share that now but this is kind of just your 
this is more for you than for it's almost us. Almost like a typical um, gym, your gym session with your ladies, like with your female friends, like just say it that way. So we're just going to be discussing most of the time. Um, can you give me an indication that you can see the? Am I sharing my screen properly? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay, so I think the best way to start off a journey of being a woman working in a male-dominated environment is definitely building up your self-confidence, cultivating confidence. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of these in detail, but we can provide the slides afterwards. But there are just a few things that I think we should touch on. Um, so as you go through this 12 weeks, um, we are trying to get you work ready. And like I said a few minutes ago, you are in a male dominated field. The tech industry is heavily male dominated. So a few things I would always recommend is be assertive, even if you aren't confident, you know, I guess it goes back to the old saying of fake it until you make it. Um, so even if you aren't confident stepping into a male dominated environment, definitely work on being assertive. And at the same time, you need to learn how to handle conflict um, because being a woman and being assertive in a male dominated environment will attract conflict at some point. Um, I don't want to say that I'm, I guarantee it, but I just feel like it's a common thread. It's a common trend that happens you know, as women in male-dominated fields, if you are assertive, you will attract conflict. And then you will also attract con conflict when you step into leadership roles. Um, I also wouldn't say it's a guarantee, but it does happen quite often. So um, that's another sphere um, or another area where you need to learn how to handle conflict. Um, being assertive, being in leadership roles, you will attract you will attract people who don't agree with your position. They don't think you should be there. Um, and then in the same vein, you need to support other women. Um, and that's why we created the females only channel, because we face different issues as men. Um, Everyone is marginalized in some way, but women face a different kind of marginalization. So if, if we are not supporting one another, it kind of just takes us 10, 10, 20 steps back. And then always be courageous. You will have to take risks. You will have to take the risk of being assertive, of being confident, of getting into leadership roles. And if you ever have to handle conflict, the way you handle it will be a risk, but you have to be courageous about it. And then these are just some habits of a self-confident woman. So, you know, finding a mentor would probably be on top of my list. You can indulge in peer mentoring in the females only group or reach out to other powerful women in your life if you have started um you know building up your linkedin profile or if or if you already have an established link linkedin profile you can reach out to women on there i'm sure um prioritizing self-care so looking after yourself not just your physical appearance or your physical health but your mental health as well your emotional self you know you deserve to give yourself that um, find time for hobbies aside from work outside of the male dominated environment, find space where there is nothing to do with work in there, find a space that is not tech, laptops, phones, you know, and yeah, I'm going to hand over to Mariam now, but these slides are available um, afterwards. So I'll just, have I stopped sharing? Okay, I really hope that was informative in some way for everyone. All right, thank you so much, Carrie. That was very straightforward and simplified. So yeah, because the theme of today's 
um, session is pretty much being confident in a male dominated environment and just being confident in general. So before I move on with my own segment, I would want us to share with, we should share amongst ourselves, like the women in tech that motivates us, inspire us, because we're trying to include like varieties of segments and one of it will include um, picking one woman in tech, an African woman in tech that inspires us and why she inspires us. So before we go ahead, please, can you share with everyone one particular African woman in tech, why she inspires you, where she's from? So anyone that is ready can just wave and take the mic then share with us. All right, Daisy, you can go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mariam. Um, hi, everyone. So, um, the woman in tech that inspires me is called Dr. Chao Mbogo. Um, nice. Some of you may not know her, but she's based here in Kenya. She's the founder of a mentorship program called um, Kamilimu, and she has also achieved quite a lot like in her career and her personal journey. And she inspires me to aim at just being like a whole person, not just the techie, not just the the lady, like the whole the whole person. And to sort of lose um, the notion of being a woman in tech, and like you know, we just deserve the seat as much as the men in tech do. Oh, you asked amongst fellow trainees. I'm no, she, she's talking to Rafa. Rafa was saying no one comes to mind, so she was asking that you could say among is the it things. that you've been working with who inspires you. It doesn't have to be someone who has already reached, you know, the top of the ladder. We can all inspire each other at okay. any level of our career. Okay, I get that. All right, thank you. So, oh, oh, this, do you have more to say? That would be it for me. Thank you. Thank you. You can please um, include the person's name in the chat box so we can all look her up later in our free time. Sorry? I'm saying you can please include, like, tag the person's name in the chat box so we can look her up later. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Does anyone else uh, want to share someone that inspires them? Yes, please share because this is supposed to be a safe space for anyone. Yeah. And we also want to go into any challenges you've been facing um, and just talk things out right now because we are, I think we have a session once a week and there is a female on each channel, but please use a safe space. Okay, maybe I'll just go ahead and share um, who I already prepared to talk about. Then we can, maybe someone will come up in the meantime. Okay, Ramet, please go ahead. Mariam, are you going to go first on that one? Oh, is Remit speaking? Remit, please go please. ahead. Please go ahead. Okay, okay. she said the microphone is not working. She'll come back later. Okay, but um, Rafa asked who our inspirations are. Um, for me, I think there are so many women. Um, I think that it's probably Tuli Marunsela. She's not really a woman in tech, but she used to be South Africa's public protector. Um, and it's really, it was amazing while she held that position to see someone like her in that position of power. 
So yeah, definitely not a woman in tech per se, but a woman who is inspirational and who has achieved what many other women think that they really can't achieve. Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to go ahead with the um, um with the slides I prepared. Can you see my screen, please? Um, no, I can't. Okay. Oh, Rafa wants to say something. Please go ahead. Yeah, so hi, Miriam and Carrie. It's nice to um, meet today with you. So it's like, uh, for me, as soon as we just met this, as I've been invited to the channel, a female only in that. So in the beginning, to be honest, I felt like why even we are separating, like there is a part for females together. Who, like, uh, you understand that feeling of what is missing here? Why are uh, we are separating uh, a section for females only? And um, yeah, I mean, obviously, as someone looked at the statistics and find that uh, the number of women in maybe in science, in uh, positions of power, anything in tech, for instance, it's like it's much, much uh, lower than the males, right? So it's about uh, uh, how can we empower ourselves? That uh, is basically, I think, what is the point of this, right? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, yeah. So, um, and I find that as soon as we get in touch and um, like we do all of these uh, chats together, I mean, by our own, without other gender. <laughs> so it's like, it's much better that we express ourselves better. And also it's like, uh, yeah, and the question for my inspiration, I didn't really have one in mind. And as you would say, it could be some of the three names follow of uh, three names here. And I, I really don't know, but I would say that I'm really happy and proud to be in an African community, absolutely African. And uh, that's make me feel like uh, uh, there are a lot, a lot is coming in the way. And um, I hope that I've been the right track. And yeah, I do my best, of course, to be one of the figures in the future, maybe. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. And that's exactly why this, these sessions are here and the channel is because you need a, a space to feel safe. Um, and where you can find people, women who look like you and who have faced the same challenges to um, inspire you. And I think Mariam wants to start with the slides. Okay, sorry. I had to leave and join because I couldn't like share my screen. So for those who are just joining, the theme for today's discussion is pretty much self-confidence, being a confident woman in a male-dominated space. So we really just want to highlight um, how to be confident, also highlight some women in tech who are doing great things already and see how they inspire us and how we should look up to them. So before I go ahead now, I don't know if there's anyone that wants to share um, an African woman in tech or an African woman in general who just inspires them, motivates them and someone they just look up to in general. If there is anyone that wants to share um, someone like that to us, then you can just wave for those who are just joining before I go on with, the, with my segment.
Okay, I guess I'll just go. Her, please. Yeah, it's so easy to mention men from the top of your head. I know, right? Madam, are you having problems with your slides? I guess so. Uh, what to do? Yeah, Daisy. I think Daisy is the one who just dropped that message. Yes, it is very easy to just mention men. But the question we should ask ourselves is why is it so difficult for us to think of women? Um, does it mean that we just women just aren't given the same spotlight or does it mean that we don't care enough about women you know we should ask ourselves these questions mariam do you just share it with me yeah i just shared my ppt with you so you can present for me instead okay i'll check if we had I had technical issues yesterday as well. Do you have it in PowerPoint format? Can't you share it in PowerPoint instead no, of Google slides. Google slides? But okay, I've got it. Okay. Okay, let me try. Maybe it is because we have more responsibilities than men. We are not expected to do a lot of unpaid labor, such as childcare, you know, taking care of the home. Um, so it could be that. I'm trying to share the slides. Mariam, can you see my Mariam, can you just give me an indication that you see it? Okay, just give me one second. Mariam, I don't think it's working on my end, sorry. Um, Mariam, are you still in the... Okay, I think until we get that fixed, I'd really like at least three of the female participants to come forward and speak about any challenges they've had and any challenges they think they are going to have in the next few weeks so that we can start talking about that, please.
it's really now is the time to speak about this because these sessions are dedicated to you. Yes, Mary. Hi, Kerry. Um, so I was just wondering, um, may maybe we could, I don't know, if people are very quiet. I, I was just wondering whether we could just try to understand maybe from the females, um, female trainees, why, why tech for them? Maybe we could start by understanding what's what was what is the motivation behind them wanting to pursue. I'm not a tech person, so I'm I'm a bit yeah. curious to understand yeah. why why it's it's a very male dominated space, as you say. Why at the first place want to do tech, and then we get the motivation behind that. If there's anybody yes, who's willing, yes, I do think that. that's a good idea because I'm not in tech either, so. That was an awesome idea. So anyone who's willing to share with us, it, it would be nice to know. Uh, yeah, why did you, why, why tech at the first place? Go ahead, please, Amal. I think we have Alma. Uh, I'm sorry, Amal, Amal, Amal with a hand up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi, yeah. hey guys. Hi. Hi, we can hear you. Okay, so mainly tech because uh, I think tech uh, you can work from anywhere if uh, you're into the software as, as much as. Uh, uh, you can work uh, from home. You can as well balance between your family and your work. So okay, so maybe not to cut you short. Okay, mm -hmm. right now I'm not I'm not a tech person, and I mainly work even from home, and I kind of balance all that. But we just want to just try and understand deeply in terms with uh, in terms uh, of why tech. Interest? Yes. Why Why did you choose tech to be specific? Why list? You know, it's a very male-dominated space. Because mm, uh, I think uh, tech, uh, it has like, it has many great reasons if you understand deeply what you want in tech, because it's, it's broad. So I liked analysis. I liked math and physics in school. So oh, that's the driving factor. Yeah, that's interesting to know that you loved math, you like you like statistics, and it's also those are very male dominated um, subjects as well. So maybe we can we could hear from others. Anyone else in terms of like your motivation towards tech? Eden, you can go. Okay, hello everyone. Hi. Um, the main reason I chose tech is because I like to solve problems and I feel like tech is, the whole point of tech is to automate things and help people to solve their problems. And I also like to learn new things every day. And regarding tech, you can learn new things uh, because they're, they updates things like constantly and mainly that's why yeah all right thanks for sharing that that, that gives us um you know you loving um to solve problems 
and that has nothing to do with your gender, that not, uh, has nothing to do with your, the, the, your color, your beliefs. It's about what, what you want, and that's what you went for. Um, I, I don't know, Kari, how much time do we have here? Could we hear from others? We, it's an hour session. So we've so, got about 30 minutes. Oh, we, we still have 30 minutes. Okay, so others can also share. Anyone else who's willing to share? Maybe as people are thinking about it, I'm also, um, I, I'm, I have a very scientific background, educational background in, in the sense that uh, even my undergrad, I pursued medical biotechnology. And in my class of, uh, we were like 58 students, there were only seven, seven females. And uh, going up to my master's degree in public health policy and leadership, it was also quite male dominated. So uh, why I'm sharing this, I know it's, a, it's, it's quite a tech space, is, is because I, I understand the struggles and um, um, especially societal struggles, pressure that comes along with, uh, with us uh, uh, females trying to pursue male spaces especially that in society, our societies um, uh, have usually have expectations in how, what we should do, how we should look like, what we should be pursuing, what are, you know, called, what, what are areas that are termed as um, basically female friendly spaces to be, uh, to be pursuing or female friendly careers to be pursuing. But one thing that I've always found to be a very um, a great motivational factor or um, uh, yes, a great motivational factor was um, being very clear on what I want, what I want to pursue and why I do, why I wanted to pursue health in general. So even though we were very few females and all that, I knew that I, some of these things should not be affecting me. Things like looking at the number of uh, male students in my class and feeling way intimidated about it. And even statistics shows that, you know, women in STEM, they, uh, as much as there are many who are uh, than before who are pursuing STEM, there's also a challenge of actually continuity in STEM because of the intimidation around the area around the area you're pursuing, you feel like you're not good enough. So maybe let's say it's in the class, uh, like in our 10 academy class, we have uh, a lot more males than female. So you feel like if you intimidated even to ask question, maybe it's a stupid question, maybe I'm not good enough. So some of these things are the ones that are uh, majorly hindering us from, uh, from achieving from achieving excellence in these male dominated fields. Yeah, but from my experience is that these fields, as long as you want to go, uh, you, you, you want it, you go for it and it works, but it, you have to put in work as well. So it has to be a little bit of attention. So I'll let anyone else who's willing to share um, about why they're, why tech, for them, I can see we have more than um, we have more than fifteen people here. Anyone else? Okay, so we will go by mentioning names. Maybe Sel Selam, Selam, would you be willing to share? Okay, we have Nerdos, then we go to Selam, then we hear from uh, Matilda in that order. So over to you, Nerdos. Not sure we could, we can hear you. Maybe you're on mute.
Hmm. Tarek, are you able to hear Nados? No, I'm not on the... Uh... Okay, maybe as she's uh, fixing her mic and stuff like... Okay, Rehmet, you have your mic on? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like um, How are you, everyone? Um, oh, good. I... I decided to join the tape world because I already I'm in the tape world. I'm a developer here in Ethiopia, so it wasn't anything for me being in a tech uh, world. So that's my reason. I'm not new to tech. And, and, and why? Wh why did you choose a tech career? Why? Why exactly? Well, uh, I love mathematics, so I did my degree with my uh, in my in electrical engineering. So after that, I got interested in computer engineering. I have no reason except that I'm interested in what in coding. I my first project really gave me to be more interested in building things with. Uh, coding, so I ended up pursuing that uh, class. Okay. Any um anyone else willing to share? Yes, Salam. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, please. Uh, well, uh, it's really challenging uh, to be in a male-dominated, uh, uh, you know, field. But the the reason I'm uh, in the STEM is because I'm really interested in solving problems, like real-world problems can be tackled uh, and can be solved. And why not me? If anyone can do it, why not me? What's what's there to stop me? If I put in the work, if I did the, the, what I have to do, um, I believe that I can achieve whatever, whatever I want, you know. It doesn't matter about the gender. Of course, the reason that many uh, women doesn't join the system is because of the society. It's not uh, that supportive. And um, most of the time, uh, women have many responsibilities regarding home and different issues. So. Um, since um, this takes a lot of our time, like uh, and a lot of our concentration and things, it, I think it's difficult for many women to handle all those things. But uh, it all comes down to passion, I believe. And uh, just if a person have that passion, and if that passion led that person to pursue a lot of opportunities, then I believe. Uh, gender would not be uh, a problem. Even if it's a problem, that person can pass the, that barrier. Thanks. Thank you, Salam. Maybe before you go, um, you mentioned it, it's very challenging. Yes, um, uh, the journey has been very challenging. Maybe you can shed some more light in terms of what, what are the actual challenges that you personally face? when you're uh when you in this tech journey what are your uh what are your biggest challenges that you face as a woman um i i i must i i guess you yeah from ethiopia so because we are yeah. in different contexts yeah. maybe you get from your end uh i believe like the challenges are like uh Genderize when it comes to gender wise, it's it will be it becomes more of uh, the society impact uh, towards women. You know, uh, there is a predefined uh, societal definition: women can do this and this and this, and uh, men are supposed to do the same things. And uh, a person uh, to think that uh, me to think that I can do something, I need to defy something like. Oh, as a woman, you cannot do these things. You cannot uh, understand this complicated uh, coding skills, or you cannot solve problem this big. Uh, 
I need to live that mindset. I believe that the, the first challenge is like, uh, it's really intimidating to be one of those few people who are exposed to the STEM. Uh, but I believe I, that no matter what, uh, if I changed my mindset, it's all come down to mindset. And the challenge comes from society. That that's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, with that, there are a lot of responsibilities that ladies should take care, especially uh, at home, you know, uh, helping uh, parents and uh, things like that. So, um, those are the main things. This is the, this, the society, the culture, and a lot of responsibilities that we are supposed to juggle because of that. But that's a very interesting perspective. Kari, what are your thoughts on, in terms of uh, practical challenges or any other person who wants to share the challenges they face and it, m make it personal so that we kind of try to relate to what you go through if it's a societal pressure, I try to give us an example of something that happened to, to you. So for example, if I can, um, um, I can share my personal example, um, I'm also um, an athlete, uh, I, I play cricket, so it's also a male-dominated space, studying male-dominated space and all that. So I remember sometimes um, my aunties would be, um, would be like, okay, you will never get a husband um, uh, because, you know, um, no man will be uh, will be willing to to deal with a woman who's so scientific and also sporty and masculine in those so basically demotivating comments in those areas. So anybody who's willing to share um, some of the challenges they have come across and how they actually uh, overcame them. Um, I think Matilda had a hand raised, so she can okay. go first. If she's there, I can see also Rafa has Matilda, a hand up. Matilda, you still have a question? Oh, Matilda. Matilda, do you want to share? Okay, let's, uh, Matilda, hand up, then Rafa will follow. You can unmute, Matilda. I'm sorry, I used my hand by accident. But um, maybe to share why I chose this field. Um, for me, it started as curiosity. It started as curiosity, which is slowly becoming, um, growing into passion. Um, so it began with um, the course I was taking in campus. I was taking by statistics, you know, exploring the data, you know, and um, using statistical methods to 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 do all this um, stuff, um, I became I, it sparked it sparked some interest, and some guy friend of mine suggested that maybe I should try data science. It's it's not very um, doesn't have a lot of women in it, um, but it would be it would be a good idea to specialize in it. So I checked it up. And yeah, out of curiosity, you know, my guy friends would tell me just how much um, code is fun and how excited, you know, how excited they would get when things back out of their coding. And yeah, it's that curiosity that led me to data science. And yeah. And, and what are the challenges that you've faced so far and how did you overcome them? Well, I'm still new. I'm still new to this because I just recently um, got into it. The challenges is, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the technical bit of it. And um, it's, you know, um, I'm not very familiar with the machine learning or um, engineering stuff, but I, I'm just learning, you know, it takes time to learn, especially now with the challenges and the deadlines that have to be met. It's tough because I have to learn fast, as fast as possible for me to continue and deliver on time. So I think for me at the moment, that's the 
current challenge I'm facing because I haven't been in the field with the men to know the um, challenges faced uh, from them. Yeah, so that's all I can say. Thank you. Um, that's that, that that's good to know. That's good to know. And at the end of the day, learning is about an attitude. So since since you have the attitude to learn, you always learn, and learning never stops. So uh, that's good to know that you want to put more efforts into it. So Rafa had her hand yeah. up. Maybe after that, I'll give the mic back to Carrie. Yeah. Hi, Mary. It was really nice to know. First of all, I it's just I just yeah, started by what tip told us about uh, your accolade uh, field because it's really like it's the, th the thing here what's happening for us in Sudan whenever some uh, women want to jump in something that is like uh, seems to be uh, man only uh, like uh, it's only uh, a man thing and um, I remember once before I wanted also to join some kind of I don't remember exactly yeah it was wrestling yeah and just when I told my family like are you crazy what are you doing and, and unfortunately I, I didn't make it but I remember once I just challenged them it was like a time that when we had kind of protests and so on in Sudan and uh, I was sort of participating in so many things there and um, they were really like disagreeing on my ideas on me going out with, with all of that even i believe in the in the case and um i mean i i had to vote i have to participate i thought all of that and yeah that was really like uh, kind of things that i felt good that I did challenge there and uh, yeah I mean challenging it's not only the family but it's about uh, the the whole culture the whole traditions and everything and I can see I would say that uh, in Sudan here we have more empowering um, of females now because they are just trying to to like uh, Yeah, protesting about every um, old tradition that has no any basic of uh, evidence because you know sometimes it's just about it's just saying no for you because you are female you should stay home and all of that so I i'm really happy that you shared your story it's really nice and uh, coming to why i choose tech it's like uh, as i told carrie maybe in the interview I thought that it's a like a dominant field and uh, I mean, I, I can see that it's very dominant now and uh, AI especially will be very dominant in the future. And I'm really interested in knowing, I mean, how all of this work, like in the beginning it was bustling me, but as soon as I want to know much more about it and I know that I have, I, I have a lot to add in this field. Yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah, right before you go, it's interesting to hear how uh, much obstacles you faced even being, uh, you know, stopped or refused from pursuing a specific thing because it's a male-dominated thing. Uh, uh, maybe I'm interested, maybe you could share with us a little bit about how did you overcome that? You, you know, as we can see, you're still in take, you've not given up. And although, regardless of what the society says, so what, what is your secret in terms of like to move on, to keep moving on despite all the challenges? How did you overcome the challenge? Okay, uh, that's a nice question. So basically, I first of all, uh, try to identify very clear what are my principles, my own principle, like get rid of everything that is uh, put in my mind, as Salam just said before about uh, changing the mindset. So I'm trying to get rid of everything that is in my mind, uh, which came from, uh, which is false, uh, just coming from uh, unknown sources and try to understand why in the first place that is like, uh, 
that's being understood that way or why they are acting that way and so on. And when I just come to clear a um, list of those are my principles and those are others principle which I don't care about and I don't really uh, take into account. So when I feel like I'm just going in the right track, uh, I mean, no, when I just feel like I'm, I'm uh, like uh, something that is from outside, which is not my, it doesn't really uh, include it in my, my own list, I really don't get attention to it. I just try to like just ignore and uh, as it's never been said, right? And yeah, it's really helped me to just overcome anything that they've been saying or they are trying to do to 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 not let to not let me just grow and go for things that, that I want. Yeah. Thank you, Rafa, for sharing that. It's 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 actually good to know because sometimes uh, we we share a lot of um, obstacles along the way and some of us might not know how to get past that so some of the tips you shared are really practical and um, uh, that we could borrow a leaf or two so uh, before i give the mic back to the, our facilitators today maybe um the three things for me having had uh, pursued all my life male-dominated fields, either being in sports, even in my extracurricular activities, is quite male-dominated. The, the the top three things that I found um, that that helped me um, go through the challenges and also excel in these three fields, uh, first was defining what I want, defining my goals my own way. So just like Rafa mentioned, defining my passion my own way there, you know, sometimes the society uh, can, can, can be very tempting in, in terms of like trying to define who you should be, who you should look like, what you need to achieve. So um, I found that defining clearly and having a clear understanding of what I want what I want to achieve in life and who I want, defining it my own way helped me narrow down and have a clear understanding of what I need to do. So, and it, it helped me close my ears to all the negativities that, you know, uh, floated around me uh, wanting to, uh, to do sciences and sports at the same time. The second thing is having, making a plan. So like goal setting, making a plan helped me to not to sway off the, um, of what I want to achieve. So basically I have a clear understanding of what I want to achieve. Uh, the second thing was making a good plan, a practical good plan, uh, set goal, uh, 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 how I'm going to, uh, to, to, to actually achieve this goal. So I would set milestone, which would help me. It's more like a roadmap. How am I going to do this? If I want, if I want to graduate from Ten Academy, what is my plan? Split down into like small milestone and all that. So that is the second thing that helped me uh, not only go through the obstacle but also excel in these so-called men uh, men dominated fields. The third one I would like to share, and uh, which which I think it's might be one of the most important one, is staying positive being very positive about everything because there's a lot of negativities that 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 goes around but your um your uh, ability to stay positive uh it transforms all the negative noises around into motivate motiva motivational voices that's what happens to me so when everybody's saying, okay, Mary, you need to get married, you're now too old, you, you've committed too much to sciences and sports and forgotten this. So when I stay positive in terms of like, not necessarily, um, you know, there's a saying that goes like, grab a knife by the handle, but not the blade. So, you know, the, the knife has a, a, a blade side and a handle. So when you grab a knife by the handle, it's still the same knife, but it will not hurt you. But when you grab the knife by the blade, it will surely cut you. 
So basically, I, I chose to, to see, to look at, to, to try and um, identify positivity around all the negative noise that comes around uh, along. And it helped me transform all the negativity into a motivating factor that motivates me to continue pursuing what I, uh, uh, what I want to get to. So anyway, that's from me. I would like to maybe give back uh, the mic to our facilitators for the purpose of time. Kari, over to you. Thank you. Um, I think Mariam dropped off completely because she had network issues. Um, so from my side, just to add something, I'm also not in tech. I'm currently studying economics, but I would love to go into science next year, which is my goal. Um, so Mary, I've, I've taken note of all your advice. Thank you for that. Um, but I think it's very interesting. We are from Africa, we're African women, and historically and traditionally, our cultures, for the most part, have always been matriarchal. So the women have always been head of households um, in some manner. Um, of course, it differs from country to country, tribe to tribe, but I think, you know, women in Africa have always had a very um strong um position in the household um so i do think for myself when i think of because i'm pursuing a lot of things outside of studying and working at the academy but when i think of you know fear if i feel scared of trying to do things i just like tell myself all the time you know your your female ancestors were probably they were probably in charge of something. They were probably running something because that is just historical um, evidence that is there. So um, I think we should look to the future and to the past to find courage as women. But we also don't, you know, we don't need to work as hard as we have been to find our place in whichever industry or sector. Um, yeah. Um, and I know you guys can do it, and please take advantage of the Just for Women channel, I believe it's called. If you haven't been added or invited, reach out to Mary or me or Mariam on Slack. Um, and this, these sessions are here just for you guys, um, so that we can keep the conversation going and keep talking. Um, I'm sure we'll face challenges, but that's what we are here for. We're here for each other um you know so i hope you guys really enjoyed it um and we will share the slides um as soon as mariam is back up um online and thank you mary for adding so much wisdom that i, I would never have been able to thank you so much for that anytime that's why it's a safe space for us women so anyone it would be I, I think even if somebody will have ideas on what we can do on the next sessions, we can we could use Slack to kind of brainstorm on other ideas that some of us would want to talk about. I think that's a good idea. Why doesn't yeah we can all just drop one idea per day in Slack? If if something comes to mind, put it in the Just for Women channel. It doesn't, you know, there's no stupid topic. There is no topic that is um, that is silly or stupid. So, and if you have concerns, we, maybe I can jump on a call with you or Maria or Mary if we can do it at that time. But yeah, um, this should be also collaborative. We should work together on this. Thank you, Mary, for that. Thank you, Kari, and thank you for for the session. Okay, so I'm going to tell Abdullah to stop recording and this will be available on YouTube if you want to come back to it. Thank you, everyone. Um